Dr. Wong, I wanted to say it was a pleasure you know, hearing your talk today. Uh, it was very informative. I'm Paul Santos, and I work for a private diagnostic lab called Waypoint Analytical, and we're located in Anaheim, California. It was very interesting to hear you list a lot of the diseases that you were talking about because we've been offering this service for quite some time, too, ever since uh, cannabis became legal in California, and we were seeing many of the diseases that you were speaking about in your presentation. So it was kind of nice to kind of get that confirmation that both of us as pathologists were seeing the same issues that are facing many of the growers of this crop. So some of the issues that we see most often were, were, were repeated in your presentation. You know, things like fusarium causing both, you know, crown rot, root rot, uh, stem rot, uh, pythium root rot. Uh, we're not dealing so much with uh, the hemp production side of uh, the industry. Most of ours is medicinal or recreational. So we don't get to see a lot of the field grown things that, that, that you were mentioning, you know, with the seed related issues. Most of the clients that we service, they're obtaining their plant material from, from propagation houses or they're doing their own clonal cuttings and rooting their own material. So we do, do see a lot of that fusarium that you were talking about that can get transmitted you know, from infected mother stock. So I thought that was a very important issue that you brought up. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I work for the state of uh, Nevada, uh, Department of uh, Agriculture. So as a plant pathologist, I deal with everything, not just industrial hemp and also marijuana plants. So for some reason, during the last two years, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, problem with associated with industrial hemp and the cannabis production in the Nevada. So we have a chance to look at those uh, issues. We take a lot of sample, we accept sample. So we do analysis, we do the diagnostic, and also we do the uh, DNA barcode to identify what kind of pathogen in there so we can figure out what's wrong with all those issues. So we, we do, did find a lot of diseases, which that's why I'm excited to present in the, in the conference. Yeah, I agree totally with you, because I think you know, one, of the, one, of the, one of the benefits of you know, legalization of marijuana or the greater extent of, of, of uh, growing hemp as, a, as an industrial crop is that now we're being able to open that industry up to the much needed science because there's a there's a big gap in in our in our in the knowledge that we have with respect to the diseases that impact both marijuana and the hemp crops. So it's kind of exciting. We kind of feel like maybe we're on the cutting edge, right, at the right. at the frontier, trying to find new things and, and discovering new things that, that impact this crop and the growers that try to you know well, cultivate that's true. it. Yeah, I feel the same way because every time we look at the cannabis or in either industrial hemp or medical marijuana plants. There's nobody has done very much work on that. So anything funding from that type of crop, or new, it could be new disease or some kind of new conditions. So the growers need the information to, to resolve the problem. So, but unfortunately, not very many people really work on that. A lot of people I contact say they have research facility, they have a technical uh, advantage, but they just don't want to work on that. For example, like I was talking about virus, there's something infected by some kind of virus, but we cannot figure out what it is, so they need some kind of research to figure out. So yeah. hopefully in the future, people can work on more. Yeah, I know. I, I, it makes me wish that maybe I was a more of a virologist and not so much of a mycologist. You know, I don't know what your expertise was or what you specialized in when you were in graduate school. I, but I do see like a lot of a lot of clients ask questions about viruses, and I honestly have to tell them that you know, aside from hearing maybe you know hemp mosaic, I, I don't know much else. All right, yeah. But by training myself as a nematologist, uh, also plant pathologist, and also molecular biologist. So actually, I got three different expertise in there. But in the plant pathology as well, I'm, I, was, I was more focused on the soil-borne fungus, or nematodes, and the virus, also uh, plant viruses. It, so, so you mentioned nematodes. I did have one question that I get, didn't get to ask you uh, during your presentation. And maybe I, I don't know if I heard right or not, but was it, the, the, it's mostly the lesion nematode is the one of primary problem on, 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 on hemp? Or we're not real sure yet. Um, the reason I point out the niche nematodes, which is called the pretilancus, uh, is because we found this uh, from the from the potato field, from the from some fields. Because 
But we, we talk about the root rot. Uh, the reason why root rot is so devastating is just because could be some kind of nematodes take some role um, to uh, make the plants more susceptible yeah, that's to an fungal excellent infection. Point. So that's why we're addressing the nematodes in, yeah. the, in the disease complex. That would be very interesting. It would be so, interesting to see what you find out. Yeah, but we'll still work on that. So. Oh yeah, I think there's one grower from New Mexico. He asked about it. Uh, did you find the verticinium? Verticinium wilt. Uh, since we found the fusarium wilt, uh, some other diseases, uh, he's got some kind of problem with uh, verticinium, which is a big issue for some crop like uh, purple mint. Uh, it's a huge right. problem. But so far, I haven't found any from the cannabis yet. Right. So I still pay attention to it because every time the sample came in. They got a welding or some kind of a disease going on. I will always check for verticine to make sure there's anything in there. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'd have to say in the samples that we've received, we've never seen verticinium either. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's something that's always on your radar for sure. Yeah, well, I, that's, yeah. That's 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 good to uh, don't have any verticine on the no, cannabis. So no. nobody wants it. Nobody wish. There they is have there it. is one disease though that that I didn't see mentioned on your on your um, survey that you've been conducting, and one that we begin we've been seeing of late, and that's a a, a, a thalaviopsis. Uh, causing a like a root rot, but also invading the crown mm -hmm. at the bottom of the of the plant too. I don't know if maybe if you've come across that or not. No, no, I haven't crossed that yet. So. Yeah, so, I would be very curious to know what species it is because it's difficult and it's much slower growing than uh, mm -hmm. the Libyopsis basicola. Oh, so okay. maybe that's something. If we had an isolate, that if we sent it to you, would you be interested in maybe? determining yeah, can, what species it is? Well, we probably can uh, DNA barcoding to so figure out what it is. So if you got a chance, you can send me some image or uh, describe what kind of disease look like. Yeah. And then send me some sample or maybe the isolates. Yeah, culture uh, we plate. Can, yeah, culture plates. Uh, we can uh, figure out what species it is. Yeah, that'd be, so that'd be cool. Yeah, right. And so. then I don't have time to write stuff up and I don't have a facility for doing inoculations for mm -hmm. Cox postulates. But maybe that's something on your end and you could get a publication out of it. Oh yeah, we can cooperate. So we'll kind of figure out what's uh, yeah, that'd be <laughs> what's cool. wrong with the uh, with yeah, the crop. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Uh, there's not very much information on the cannabis crop diseases. So there's a lot of grower uh, in the U.S. They're gonna grow a lot of hemp and also medical marijuana plants in the facility. They need the information on how to manage those diseases. So they don't have those information, and they don't know how to manage it. So that's a big issue. And uh, people can do some work to figure out what's wrong with it. That's great. Uh, they can help them to produce healthy cannabis crop. Yeah. Well, I would ask you one question, because you know, both you and I, we kind of agree that you know, we do cannabis, but it's kind of on the side. Yeah, right? it's on the side. It's true. Yeah. There are a lot of other plants and crops that we both deal with. Right. But, you know, what do you think is maybe one of the most challenging things that, that faces the cannabis industry with res when we start talking about um, management of diseases? What do you think would be the most challenging thing to growers? I think the most challenge is how the grower can get uh, healthy plants. Because I talked to one of uh, uh, attendees, she said, is there any program that uh, really can provide healthy stock, healthy plants, and they can start from the very beginning that plants, what they have is healthy. Uh, healthy. So that's a big challenge. So I said, no, nobody really uh, really do this kind of thing. So maybe in the future, there's a direction to do that. Yeah, tissue culture or the generate uh, disease-free uh, stock plant or germ plasma, whatever they call that. So you just get a very clean, disease-free, clean stock to start with cannabis growing uh, business. Right. So that's probably the best way. That's called prevention. So, and also the challenge is that there's no chemical product like uh, pesticide or fungicide. There are a lot of label for cannabis, so they cannot use it for cannabis crop. So they have to use some alternative product, and they may not be very effective, depends on 
what kind of condition the treat. So that's a lot of challenge for them too. And so they're almost forced to be organic growers by default, right? right? It's, technically, it is. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's not so bad. <laughs> it's, a lot of it's not that it's impossible, but it's, it's much more challenging. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a challenge. Well, in order to do virus testing, you need to have specialized equipment. There are some ELISA-based uh, kits that are on, available on the market, but the, the biggest problem is that we don't have a firm understanding of what viruses uh, have been described on cannabis in the first place. Right, would you, right. Would you agree? Yeah, that's true. Um, so even though we can test the virus, but we don't know what kind of virus to test for. So you have to know what species you want to test uh, for that specific virus. So a lot of the time we just don't know what to test for, so that's, that's kind of a big challenge. So, but there's a way to do that, they call it next generation sequences. Uh, so that way you can, uh, you don't need to know the target, but you can detect whatever is inside the plants uh, based on the RNA. So you can test this specific uh, virus or even a larval new virus in the plants. So that's technology in there, but it just kind of costs too much money, time to do that. So we don't know what type of virus affect the cannabis crop, and uh, it's still question mark. I, I would say that the, the diseases are regional. I mean, there are some commonalities but, for example, you know, here in California, and I would imagine here in Nevada, um, it's probably the same, where it tends to be more arid. You know, we're going to see one subset of diseases are going to be more common to our area. Whereas if you're a grower, say, like in Kentucky, maybe there may be foliar diseases that we're never going to see just because we don't have the rainfall that, that well, they have. Well, that's right. That's right. Because in a different region, like, say, in the Midwest or in the back of the East, they maybe get high humidity and they get some other diseases which we don't see very much in the western, like especially in Nevada, it's pretty dry, arid condition. So may not see very often, like say powder mildew, you may see very much in some other part of the United States, but not in Nevada uh, farmland. So that's, that's something that's de environmental, environment dependent. Well, as I presented uh, uh, this morning, I said uh, prevention is a key. So try to prevent uh, introduction any type of disease agent into your facility. So that's the best way to prevent disease. And also try to uh, monitor your facility, make sure uh, you keep track on that. Uh, once you see the disease, you have to take action right away as soon as possible before they spread or overwhelming in the facility. So that's my takeaway message for those growers. I think that's an excellent point, you know, that, that prevention through good sanitation, that it has to be the foundation of, of, of any program, especially in, in cannabis where your options for control once a disease outbreak has occurred are so limited. I, I agree total, you know, wholeheartedly with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, me, me personally, when I think back to, to my, my days as a graduate student, you know, I think that the number one risk of, of growing something that's a, a monoculture and is, you know, genetically uniform, like when you're using clonal uh, stock, the, the problem is that if you do get a pathogen disintroduction then, and they're all susceptible, then the risk for, for spread and for a greater loss in yield is, is significantly higher than if you had a diverse cropping system. Although I'm, I'm not sure I would argue that, that, that crops that are planted outdoors are any less of a monoculture than those planted indoors, even though there may be other things around that environment where these, where these uh, cannabis crops are being grown outdoors. I mean, they could potentially be sources of, of, of pathogen inoculum. We, ju we just right. don't simply know yet. Well, for sure, the monoculture is really make the disease to occur more easily than the multiple species. So the cannabis production indoor, and it's actually really uh, favorable 
for some type of diseases for sure. So it's 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 a really big issue for monoculture, especially for disease. <laughs>